Hello everybody and welcome back to the second shelf. It has been quite a rough week for many of us, especially those living in the United States didn't vote for Trump and I think we should all take a moment to acknowledge that and although we have to move on obviously because because we can't stand still, I think it's important to acknowledge that a lot of people are anxious or gloomy or stressed or afraid. And all we can do at the moment and what we must do, I think, is support one another and especially those who are gloomy or anxious or stressed or afraid. So try to be supportive, try to do something nice maybe to somebody who feels less than great after this week and hopefully books also will help to find a way forward to deal with the things that will come. So onwards to the books. As always I will discuss in this video the books that I finished from previous weeks or read last week or started this week. So let's get on with it. And the first book I finished from last week was Under the Udala Trees by Chinelo Okparanta. Okparanta was born in Nigeria, moved to the US when she was 10 years old, and Under the Udala Trees is her first book. It's set in Nigeria right at the start of the Civil War in 1968, and we follow the story of Ijemeo, a then 11-year-old year girl whose father was killed in the war, right when the book opens. Ijimeo is then sent by her mother to safety to live with another family, meets another girl there, they fall in love. So the book is about discovering your sexual identity, but it's a coming of age because we follow Ijimeo into adulthood. She has to find her way to her identity to yeah stand against expectations from society from her mother um, and we follow this struggle into adulthood i i like the book i didn't love it as much as i expected i would uh, mainly i think because i read uh, adichie's book purple hibiscus right before and adichie is just more my kind of writer writing style structure so it was not entirely fair i think to operanta to compare but i i couldn't quite help it but still the themes are important it's written really well there's a lot of a folk tale atmosphere in the book um, and if, if you want to experience a coming of age story set in a different environment than the West then Under the Udala Trees is certainly a very good pick. And as I often do when I feel a little gloomy I turn to science fiction. Not so much as an escape I think but more as a means to see what could be. And I was lucky because Emma Newman's second book in the Planetfall series after Atlas was published on election day. I loved Planetfall which was published in 2015 but I read in April of this year uh, and I was really looking forward to the next book in the series. And I liked it. The book is following Carlos Moreno, he is a, um, a police officer in the future. The, the novel is obviously set in the future, just like Planet Fall. And we experience and encounter all the technological um, newities and uh, the, the political structure that we already know, know from Planet Fall. So they are Guff Corps corporations and governments are one. We have a lot of uh, artificial intelligence um, and I, I love that stuff. The geeky part in me loves that stuff. Um, the book is about a murder that Carlos Moreno has to solve. That murder is linked somewhat to the story we have in Planetfall, so to the Pathfinder, the woman who discovered the, the coordinates in the universe and then 
followed those coordinates with her crew in, in the book Planetfall. But just as a, a warning, the blurb on the book Atlas uh, after Atlas is a bit misleading because it says that Emma Newman returns to the world of uh, Planetfall, and that's not entirely true because after Atlas is set on Earth and it is a futuristic crime story. The like I said, the technology is the same, the structure of the, the governments, uh, etc., is the same, but we do not learn anything more of the fate of the people we encountered in Planetfall. So don't expect that. But if you want to read a really intelligent, fast-paced, um, witty crime story set in the future, set in the same future as Planetfall, then After Atlas is certainly a book for you. And I stayed with science fiction with the third book I read last week, and that book was Good Morning Midnight by Lily Brooks Dalton. I hadn't heard about this book, but I watched a video from Katie over at Infusions of Wit. I'll leave a link to her channel down below, and she had just read the book and loved it. So I thought, well, literary science fiction, as she uh, uh, called it, that might something, that might be something for me. And I certainly didn't regret it. Um, Lily Brooks Dalton um, is, um, was born in Vermont. She's a young American writer. She published a memoir, uh, I think last year, and A Good Morning Midnight is her first novel. It is a book set in a dystopian future, um, although we never learn what actually happened uh, and why. So don't expect that kind of dystopian tale. Um, the book is split in two, two points of views, two perspectives, main characters. One is an elderly scientist, an astronomer, Augustine, who is uh, in a research station at uh, in the Arctic Circle, um, and everybody is evacuated all of a sudden. Nobody knows exactly why, but Augustine decided to stay. And the other part of the book is set in a spaceship that just returns from Jupiter, and the main character there is Sully, um, um, a woman who had left her family behind uh, in order to go on this two-year voyage to Jupiter. She is the communications officer of the ship, and when the ship returns to Earth, all of a sudden all communication with Houston or the Earth is silent. So we have these two characters who experience the same thing, namely that there is nobody out there, and then we follow them how they deal with it. And Augustine is alone at first in the Arctic station, and then he finds a little girl who has been obviously left behind. Um, and of course Sally is not completely alone because there are crew members with her. The book is very quiet. And that is one of the strengths, I think, of, of, of this novel, because we learn about how, how the people deal with the fact that Earth all of a sudden is silent and nobody knows what has happened. Um, Augustine has to deal with a very rough environment, obviously, in, in the Arctic, and so that part is more focusing on that, how he deals with that, his relationship to the young girl, Iris. And on the spaceship, it is the way the various crew members deal with the fact that their mission all of a sudden seems completely obsolete because nobody is interested in the data they gathered from Jupiter anymore and they have no idea whether they will be able to return to Earth and if they do, what they will encounter. I think that the best part really of the book are those parts who deal with the isolation, the loneliness, the anxiety of what has happened. Uh, the relationship between Augustine and Iris is really beautiful. Um, uh, 
also the relationship of the crew members, how, how they have coping mechanisms uh, up there in space. I did not particularly like the way um, um, the, the author connected the two stories in the end. I, I thought that was completely unnecessary. I the way Augustine and Iris are pictured would have been just enough because you get hints from the beginning that something is off in, in that relationship. And the connection uh, that is made in the end between the two stories, I thought was just superfluous. But that, that is a minor thing. Plus, it is a first novel, so I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. And if you like the more quiet literary science fiction, then I think uh, Good Morning Midnight would be certainly something you would enjoy. And by the way, if you, like me, really like to read science fiction, but sometimes I'm not keeping up what is out there, what, what, what is published, then I can recommend Elizabeth's channel over at Books and Pieces, because she reads not only but a lot of science fiction, she has a fantastic a channel and a really witty and, and engaging way of talking about books. So if you want to know what kind of science fiction you, you should read, check out her channel. And then we are already at the last book, and that is the book that I have started a couple of days ago, and that is Janet Mock's Redefining Realness. Um, that is a double dip read for me because I read this book first for nonfiction November in the category important, but it is also the November read of the Feminist Orchestra Book Club, which I'm a member. Um, I leave link uh, links to the book club down below and also to Jean's channel over at Bookish Thoughts who started the book club. More important than ever, I think. So if you're interested in feminist literature, please join us and read with us. Janet Mock's book, Redefining Realness, is a memoir. Mock is a trans woman born as a boy in Honolulu, and the book describes her journey to her identity. I've been only, I'm only 10 or 15 pages in, so can't say much more than that, but I'm really looking forward to reading this over the weekend. So this was it for my books weekly with a little political introduction. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.